Hey everyone, Demonite here. In this video I want to go over the 4 error code glitch effects in TPS and what exactly they do to your guns. Let's begin with the amp glitch because that one is the least messy. Now what the amp glitch does is it adds bonus damage to your gun but makes each of your shots drain a portion of your shield. It only works while your shield is not completely empty and if you don't have a shield equipped it can't even be procced. If you proc it and then unequip your shield, you won't get any bonus damage. The way the shield drain is calculated is that one full mag of your gun will theoretically drain exactly half of your maximum shield capacity in total. So if your gun has for example 10 ammo in the magazine, each bullet will drain 5% of your shield, if it has 20 ammo then each bullet will drain 2.5% and so on. However, there is the exception of guns that consume multiple bullets per shot. If the last shot of the gun consumes more ammo than you have left in the magazine, then those extra bullets will still drain your shield and you can end up draining it below 50%. Now the damage bonus it provides is based on the gun's listed base damage. Listed means that it takes the projectile count of for example shotguns into consideration, but not unlisted projectiles or added splash damage. There is one exception to this, being guns with pure splash damage and multiple projectiles. The projectile count is not taken into consideration for them. This might be because the game treats each instance of pure splash separately from each other. Higher base damage results in a smaller bonus. What level the gun is doesn't matter, it gets the same bonus on level 1 as it gets on level 70. However gun damage is not considered across the board, instead gun types are divided into groups. Otherwise rocket launchers would always get a very small bonus, while SMGs would always get a very high bonus, because relative to each other they have very high and very low base damage numbers. Pistols, SMGs, assault rifles and all lasers might actually be in the same group, but launchers, shotguns and snipers are definitely separate. As a result, railguns and splitters are relatively bad, while beam lasers and blasters are relatively good with the amp glitch. While I don't know the exact formulas used for each group, I did a bunch of tests and made a list of all guns with the highest and lowest bonus of their gun type. It very much seems like it's not a linear, but an exponential increase the lower your base damage gets. I will link the list as a google document in the description below, so check it out if you want to know what boundaries each gun type has. Also, I will update the document should the exact formulas ever be known. Now moving on to the multi-shot glitch effect. What it does is that it increases the projectile count of a weapon, but therefore decreases the damage per projectile, the fire rate and the accuracy, and sometimes increases the ammo consumption. These bonuses and penalties vary from gun type to gun type, so let's start with the projectile count. Beam lasers as well as rocket launchers have 4 projectiles added to their shots. Pistols, SMGs, sniper rifles, railguns, blasters and assault rifles have 6 projectiles added to their shots. Shotguns as well as splitters have 12 projectiles added to their shots. Now the damage reduction part. Pistols, SMGs, railguns, blasters and assault rifles have their damage per projectile reduced by 1 6th or 16.666%. Sniper rifles have their damage per projectile reduced by 1 5th or 20%. Rocket launchers have their damage per projectile reduced by 2 7ths or roughly 28.6%. And finally splitters, beam lasers and shotguns don't have their damage reduced at all. Now the ammo consumption. Beam lasers, rocket launchers, shotguns and splitters do not consume additional ammo while the multi-shot glitch is active. Pistols, SMGs, sniper rifles, blasters, railguns and assault rifles on the other hand consume exactly one ammo more per shot, no matter how much ammo they consume by default. Then there's the fire rate penalty. This reduction is multiplicative to other fire rate modifiers, meaning it reduces your current fire rate by a specific amount and can't easily be made up for with fire rate buffs. Pistols, assault rifles, SMGs and blasters have their fire rate reduced by one half or 50%. Sniper rifles have their fire rate reduced by one third or 33.333%. Shotguns and splitters have their fire rate reduced by 3 eighths or 37.5%. Rocket launchers have their fire rate reduced by 2 sevenths or roughly 28.6%. Beam lasers have their fire rate reduced by... uh... this. 
I tested all kinds of beam lasers. It was always this number. I don't know where it comes from. Maybe someone fell asleep on their numpad or something. It's pretty much one fourth, so we'll just go with that. And then railguns are the exception and don't have their fire rate reduced at all. Lastly, there's the accuracy penalty. Now this one was a bitch and a half to deal with and honestly it's quite a mess, so I won't cluster this video with all the details, but instead write down my exact findings in the Google document as well. Overall, the multi-shot glitch effect reduces the accuracy of a gun with some exceptions. Some guns have all other accuracy modifiers overwritten and their accuracy is set to a specific value that can't be changed while the glitch is active. Other guns receive a multiplicative accuracy penalty. Again more details in the document and should the exact way the multi-shot accuracy penalty works be known at some point I will update the document. Now we get to the overload glitch. The overload glitch drastically increases weapon damage, critical hit damage and damage over time at the cost of fire rate. It also increases accuracy and ammo consumption. The weapon damage bonus is pretty simple as it has flat values and it's just regular additive gun damage. Pistols, SMGs, assault rifles, blasters and splitters gain plus 600% damage. Shotguns gain plus 500% damage. Beam lasers gain plus 400% damage. Sniper rifles and railguns gain plus 300% damage. And lastly rocket launchers gain plus 200% damage. The crit damage is equally simple, it's a regular type A bonus. Sniper rifles and railguns gain plus 50% type A crit, while all other guns gain plus 100% type A crit. The damage over time bonus is interesting as it's plus 300% multiplicative damage, so it multiplies all other DOT damage bonuses. Not that this is game changing, but it's interesting nonetheless. Next, the increase in ammo consumption. SMGs, blasters, pistols, assault rifles and splitters consume 2 ammo more per shot. Rocket launchers, railguns, sniper rifles, beam lasers and shotguns consume 1 ammo more per shot. Now there's the accuracy bonus, which isn't as stupid this time. The overload glitch effect just grants you plus 50% accuracy, which is the same type as the accuracy you get from for example skills like company man or surprise stabilized. Now because the accuracy didn't make me lose my mind, the overload glitch needed a different stat to fulfill that job, which is the fire rate penalty. Basically what you need to know is that it's multiplicative to other fire rate modifiers again, like the multi-shot glitch, and the higher your gun's base fire rate is, the higher the penalty will be. While I don't know the exact formula, the penalty seems to be increasing non-linearly with higher fire rate values, and it might actually be multiple different formulas for different gun types again. Also, for some reason the fire rate is not reduced on beam lasers, Jacob's guns and Dahl burst fire modes. Again, I wrote down some stuff in the document about it and it will be updated if I have more info. Now let's move on to the last effect, the loop glitch. What it does is it increases the fire rate of a gun, gives it a chance to not consume ammo and makes it either shoot in bursts or continuously until the mag is empty or you manually interrupt it. Assault rifles, beam lasers, shotguns, blasters, SMGs and splitters will fire continuously. Pistols, railguns, rocket launchers, sniper rifles and Jacob's pistols will fire in bursts of 9 shots. Jacob's shotguns will fire in bursts of 5 shots. Jacob's assault rifles will fire in bursts of 10 shots. And now things fall apart again because Jacob's sniper rifles fire in bursts of 19 shots and in bursts of 10 shots. Jacob's snipers seem to be actually glitched, as in this is a bug. When they initially get the loop effect, they fire in bursts of 19 shots. Then when you reload, the yellow color goes away, but they still have the loop glitch active in some weird form and it fires in bursts of 10 shots, most of the time. I've had it fire in bursts of 19 even when the color was gone once. The funny thing here is that any other glitch can be procced by that reload, so you can have the multi-shot amp or overload glitch active while you fire in bursts, have increased fire rate and a chance to not consume ammo. If you then reload again, the effect goes away completely, most of the time at least. This sure is weird, but it's manageable, so let's move on to our friend the fire rate modifier. For the burst fire guns it's actually very simple, it's a regular additive fire rate bonus. Sniper rifles, pistols and rocket launchers gain plus 250% fire rate. 
Jacob's sniper rifles gain plus 20% fire rate. Jacob's shotguns, Jacob's pistols, Jacob's assault rifles and the actually glitched version of Jacob's sniper rifles gain plus 16.666% fire rate. And lastly, railguns gain plus 5,250% fire rate. I don't know if someone accidentally put a 5 in front of plus 250%, but I like it. Now, as for all the guns that fire continuously, I don't know. Their fire rate definitely increases, but Cheat Engine doesn't show any change in their values. I tried recording it and then looking at the time it took to empty a mag, but that was very inaccurate and I'd rather not make any claims based on that. But again, if this will ever be known, I will write it in the Google document in the description, so feel free to dig through the code or whatever, figure this out and let me know if you want to. Lastly, there's the chance to not consume ammo, and it looks like Jacob's snipers have a much lower chance to consume ammo per shot than for example Jacob's shotguns, so maybe the chance increases with the burst length. Now one thing to note about glitch effects is that they only affect the gun you're holding and almost nothing else. Not grenades, nova shields, slam attacks or anything like that. There are however two exceptions to this. One is the crit bonus of the overload glitch. Since it's just regular type A, it does apply to some other damage instances, as long as they can score a crit in the first place of course. The other one is Wilhelm's Vengeance Cannon, which is affected by almost everything glitch effects do, similarly to how it is affected by other stats you can have, like laser damage when holding a laser, or amp damage from an amp shield. That means it fires multiple projectiles with multi-shot, deals bonus damage and drains your shield with amp, gains massive damage and reduced fire rate with overload, and has increased fire rate with loop. Depending on what gun you're using, these effects change. For example, with a beam laser, Vengeance Cannon will get 4 additional multi-shot projectiles, and with a splitter it will get 12 multi-shot projectiles. And yes, this also means it gains plus 5250% fire rate from railguns with the loop glitch. However, as you can see, Vengeance Cannon never fires in bursts with the loop glitch, it's always full auto, so things get a little bit ridiculous here. Anyway, that's all about glitch effects for now. I've been working on several game mechanics videos in the past few months, and let me tell you, it's been hell. It might become a little trend from here on out that I will use Google Documents to dump any additional minor information into, because otherwise some of these videos would just be clustered with random stuff. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching and see ya everyone!